But I thought Eden was a republic, a democracy. The people elected their government, but they put a president into office for six years and just kept him there. Well, then why are you calling it a dictatorship? Because they didn't know that the man they elected was a puppet. A puppet in the hands of criminals who are now running our country. Look, I don't know anything about politics. I'm not I... talking about politics. I'm talking about crime, about criminals, gangsters. What some people would call a, a gang, a mob, organization, syndicate. I don't give a damn what you call them. These animals own our country. They raped it. They're here in America, but they own the so-called free Republic of Eden. They run it any way they want to. Look, I don't understand how any of this can be. How is this possible? Because our beloved leader let it happen. In the last four years, they have turned Eden into a haven for international criminals, into a laundry for their dirty money. And what's even worse, they've turned it into a depot for the drug traffic. Eden is now the number one stockpile for narcotics in the world. And that's what they've turned our country into. We want to save it, Jody. We want to raise our country out of the darkness and shed a blinding light on the heretics who seek to destroy it. And you can help us save it. Me. I'm going to help you how. Yes. The paper. I know. I've seen this already. I don't know what it means. Who is the martyr of Eden? You are. <sighs> oh. You're crazy. You are! My name is Jody Travis. I am 100% pure American. I've never even heard of your country until we found that stupid portrait in my... This does have something to do with the portrait, doesn't it? Pietro, show her the book. I can walk. What is this? This used to be a book. It's a history book about Eden. It looks like it's been in a fire. It was in a fire, along with a lot of other books that weren't approved reading. But this one was saved by a patriot called Jeremiah Keyes. Of course, he paid for that act with his life. His son still runs the bookshop. You don't mean the guy that locked me in? Yes, look at this, Jody. It's a very bad reproduction, and it suffered in the fire, as you can see, but I'm sure you recognize it. Oh, my God, it's my portrait. Yes, it's your portrait. This is just black and white, but any school child in Eden would recognize this portrait if they saw it, but no one has seen it for a hundred years. But my mother had this portrait. She had a right to own it, Jody. But she didn't have a right to forget her heritage. Her heritage? Yes, Jody. And yours. grocery store. I thought we bought enough last Saturday to last us for the next six months. Oh, I just got a few things for tonight. I invited Valerie over for dinner. I hope that's all right with you. Fine with me. She feels a little downtrodden these days. Oh? What about Kelly? Still feels guilty about his departure? Yeah, that's why I went over to see her. I wanted to assure her that uh, it wasn't her fault and uh, that it wouldn't change our feelings towards her. And just to prove your point, you invited her to dinner. Yes, I did. Now, do you have important news for me? Oh, wait a minute. Is, is Raven still insisting on retracting that statement? Oh, the autopsy, honey. Were you able to find out Hold anything Hold on. About... Wait a minute. What? I'll tell you everything you want to know. Okay, go ahead. First, the bottom line. It looks as if there will not be a court battle over the Whitney estate. Then she isn't denying it. No, she's not. She capitulated in the face of what seems to be overwhelming evidence. Honey, you found the scar identifying Jefferson Brown. It was clearly described in that autopsy report given to us by Miles. With a photograph. The scar is identical to the one described in Jefferson Brown's previous medical records. 
And the man who calls himself Skyler Whitley? No scar at all. There is no way to deny it. And thank goodness Raven is no longer trying to. What a blow to that woman. I mean, I can imagine how she must be feeling right now, knowing that everything she has, she's losing. Let's just hope that Mr. Whitney will be gracious in victory. Uh, do you think there's any chance that he might give her something from the estate? I doubt it. He's too bitter over what Jefferson Brown did to him, mm -hmm. and the fact that Raven went along with it. I just hope he doesn't become vindictive. What, you mean bring criminal charges against her? Mm-hmm. He could make a very strong case against her. Take out his revenge on her. Well, I hope he doesn't. He'll be taking away everything that she has. He could at least leave her her dignity. And her freedom. Yeah, I say, you know, uh, Spitzer, you haven't changed a bit. I mean, you still look just like you always look. Uh, same uh, deadpan face, same inscrutable eyes. <laughs> Can't say the same for you, Gunther. I've never seen you with so much hair on your head. You used to keep your head shaved, Gunther. What happened? Ah, uh, when that uh, stinking brother of mine shaved his, I let mine grow in. I didn't want anyone to mistake me for him. Yeah. The world did. The man who took over my identity made sure of that. It also, he also made sure that everyone thought that he was me. Uh, that guy must have really been something, Mr. Whitney. Well, uh, when do we start? As soon as you shave your head. Oh, boy, you sure drive a hard bargain. <laughs> well, I kind of preferred you that way, Gunther. Uh, you look even more formidable than you already do. You kind of scared off people that otherwise might want to bother me. Yeah, I uh, sure took good care of you, Mr. Whitney. That's uh, why I was so sore at you the night you fired me. Just how did Mr. Whitney fire you, Gunther? Well, I was in that uh, pension in Paris. You know, the same joint that uh, Bruno and I lived in before we busted up. Well, I was in the bar uh, having a few drinks. And, well, it was more than just a few. Uh, suddenly, uh, Francois, he comes up, tells me that there's a man outside who wants to see me. You mean he actually wanted to see you face to face? I mean, he was really you, Mr. Whitney. I mean, I thought he was you. And, you know, I hadn't seen you since that plane crash a couple of months before that. And, uh, well, I thought that uh, you and your friend, both of you, had been killed. And, like you said, you were uh, half in the bag. It's probably very dark outside, too, right? Yes, it was. Anyway, there you were, uh, telling me I was fired and uh, that you didn't need me anymore. Well, he couldn't afford you, Gunther. I mean, he couldn't afford the risk that you would see through him. But your brother wouldn't. Your brother knew very little about Mr. Whitney. Yeah, well, he knew enough that uh, Mr. Whitney paid very well. And I'm sure that he enjoyed uh, soiling my reputation. Yeah, he must have been very happy when you showed up and offered him my job. And ask him to change his name to yours so that no one would be aware of the switch. Oh, yeah. Jeff Brown was very clever, all right? He thinks that, uh, or he thought that he covered all his angles. We still get the last laugh, though, kind of, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's not just uh, you and me, is it, Mr. Whitney? I see you got yourself a butler. Oh, he's not my butler, Gunther. Spencer is my business manager. You're what? That's right, Gunther. I'm going to be handling Mr. Whitney's affairs from now on. So, for instance, if you'd like a raise in your salary, I'm the man to see. And what if I just go over your head, fish eyes? Wait a minute, Gunther. You just get this point straight. If you want this job, you're going to have to treat Spencer with the same respect that you would treat me. Yes, sir. Well, uh, look, I can handle that. Listen, don't you worry about my misbehaving, Mr. Varney. Please stop worrying so much. It is not your fault that Jody went to the bookstore alone. I should have followed her right away. See, I, I waited. It's that indecision I always have. And by the time I got there, she was gone. Cliff, Jody probably would have been very upset if you had followed her. And you probably would have scared off that lady she met. Well, the lady that she met maybe should have been scared off, huh? Well, Cliff, why, why would anybody want to want to do anything to Jody? I mean, she's such a sweet person. You think maybe I'm worrying for nothing, huh? 
Maybe well, I am. Well, I hope you worry as much about me. I worry about you. I worry about you all the time. Why? General principle. Okay, you guys. You want anything else? I've got some black forest cake back there that would tempt a saint. No, thanks. I'm not a saint. <laughs> How about you, Mitzi? Or are you still on that actor's diet? Uh, well, I might as well be on a waitress's diet, because I'll tell you, there is no way I'm going to ever become an actress. Hey, didn't you see that sign I put up there? What sign? About Jim Dedrickson's studio. It's up on the wall by the bar. You're kidding. Yeah, there it is. Jim Dedrickson's studio. Well, yeah, I've seen this. Diedrichson's studio announces a new season of Forama classes. Professional standards maintained. I don't want to be a professional Forama. Mitzi of drama classes. Applicants must qualify by audition. <laughs> Holy cow. He is starting up again. <gasps> yeah, what else is he supposed to do? Thanks for putting the sign up. It's a great place for it. His studio's right down the street. Yeah, I think it's a good place. A couple of people already asked about it. They just went over there. Well, let's go down there and give him some moral support. It's hmm? a great idea. I, I, I could stand out front and tell everyone how wonderful he is. Hey, you can show him how good you faint, honey. Yeah. Oh, I, I, don't think, I don't think we should do that. Oh, come on. Let's get back into show business. Oh, what a noble mind is here, or throne. The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword. The expectancy and rose of the fair state. The glass of fashion and the moldy form. Uh, I believe it's mold of form, not moldy form. Oh. oh. Right, right. The glass of fashion and the mold of form. The observed of all observers, quite, quite downed, and I, a lady's most deject and wretch. Uh, it's, it's wretched, not wretched. Pardon? Um, wretched. It's miserable. Miserable. Kelly is excited to be back in Rome. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. Of course, he's lived there practically all his life. Well, the best part of it is that he's with his parents now when they need him, and I can assure you they're very happy about that. What about you and Mike? Don't you miss him a lot? Well, I guess you'll just have to help us fill the void. Come to dinner more often. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> so, Mike, I want to know about Skylar Whitney. Were you able to prove anything about his identity? It's been confirmed. The scar you told us about gave us positive proof that Jefferson Brown was posing as Skylar Whitney. Mm-hmm. There are going to be a lot of changes, especially in the Whitney house. Oh, Raven. Yeah. Losing all her glory. <clears throat> you think she's going to be able to handle it? No, considering the kind of woman she is. Is she still putting up a fight? No. No, Valerie, she isn't. She's admitted that her original statement is the truth. So it looks like Skylar Whitney will be moving into the mansion, and Raven will have to move out. It's incredible. I feel like I've been involved with this thing from the very beginning. How do you mean? Well, when I first knew the real Sky Whitney and Jeff Brown, I was very proud of how fine a plastic surgeon my father was, and I talked about him a lot, and maybe I gave Jeff Brown the idea in the first place. You can hardly blame yourself for that. Well, what I would like to know is why did he choose to call himself Jim Diedrichson? Oh, you know, Jim has a theory about that. Mm -hmm. Jeff Brown worked at the State Department, right? Yes, he did. Well, it's possible that he just came across Jim's military file. Jim was listed among the missing in action, so all his personal effects and all his records went to the State Department. Jeff could have just stolen his identity. In the same way he stole Skylar Whitney's. Not a bad theory, Valerie. Yeah. Well, uh, do you know if uh, uh, Jim uh, is going to do anything else? I mean, do you know if he has any plans for the future? Well, I guess he's an actor. He'll keep struggling. Oh, what a road and peasant slave. Am I? Is it not monstrous that this player here 
but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to its own conceit. Oh, I'm sorry, we're interrupting something. Oh, not at all. Uh, Miss Martin, Mr. Nelson, do come in. What's the, uh, what's the Mr. Nelson? Well, uh, have you decided yet? Uh, about the class, I mean. I, I was just telling uh, Ethel and Marvin here, I'm sorry, this is Cliff and Mitzi, right. that you two had an opportunity to get the last two places in the classes, and so... We, was... we never discussed it. No, please, I don't want to rush you. If, you know, if just because you were there first, uh, I'm sure that uh, they will understand. Understand? Oh, I understand, yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Diedrichson, we, uh, we would be honored to uh, study with you, and please take us in your class. Great. We would. We, we really would. We would. Terrific. Thank you very much. Well, I'm, I'm really sorry, but do come again a little later on. Maybe there'll be some room in the class, and, and, and don't stop pursuing acting. Thank you very much for coming in. You're real nice people. All right? Take this. It's all right. This is terrific! What's terrific? I, well, your class, it's all filled up. Mitzi, I don't think the class is filled up. No, those are my first, probably my last applicants. Oh, I get it. You uh, didn't want to hurt their feelings. Right, they're really nice people. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not going to make any money off of this studio. I just quit. Drive a truck. Jim Diedrichson, don't you dare get discouraged. I, look at me. I, I have not made one dime off of acting. But am I discouraged? I. Of course. But do I act discouraged? That is your best acting role. Not acting discouraged. I remember when our little theater group was in its infancy. And we had such high hopes for the Whitney Theater. And then Mrs. Raven Whitney dashed those hopes to pieces. Frankly, Scott, don't worry your pretty little head. Someone tells me my car said that someone's going to come along here and take this all away from Raven. Uh, uh, what was that? What, you mean you didn't hear? There's some guy in town who looks exactly like Sky Whitney. Yeah, I met him. You met him? Does he really look like him? Yeah. Oh, Mike tells me he has a great case. He's going to take everything from Raven. Including the theater? Including the theater. Well, that's an interesting development. Can't make out that word. Principality. It describes what Eden used to be. I don't know what a principality is. <laughs> it's just what it sounds like. A principality is a country that's ruled by a prince. The prince in this book was named Alexis Bonaventure. Bonaventure is the family name. You've heard of Raleigh Castle, haven't you? Yes, I have. It's in Graham County, isn't it? Don't they have some kind of a pageant there? Raleigh Castle was the summer palace of the Prince of Eden. And when the royal family was driven into exile, they lost everything. But years later, an American bought the summer palace and brought it here, stone by stone. Well, that I didn't know. Any more than I know about this. Look, I really, I oh, can't make mind. out what I'm reading. I'll tell you a story. I know it by heart, because I used to hear it almost every day in Eden. Why? To keep the legend alive. The promise of Marie Bonaventure. Now, books can't keep that legend alive, because there are no books about Marie Bonaventure. All the stories in print have been destroyed. No one knows about her sacrifice. All the books have been burned or destroyed, except for this one. Why? Is, is this story dangerous to their government? This story is the greatest enemy that the government has. It's what they fear the most. 200 years ago, Prince Alexis ruled in Eden, and he ruled very well. He was prince, and his father had been prince before him, but Alexis wanted his country to become a democracy. The ideal of democracy was spreading through all the world, to America, to France, to Eden. And he wanted to step down from his throne and let the people choose their own form of government. Sounds like quite a man. He was. He loved his country and he loved his family. He had a beautiful wife, Morgana, and a very beautiful daughter named Marie. She was 19. 
but she was married already and she had a daughter of her own. It was ideal. It was like a fairy tale. And then the rebellion came. You mean a revolution? No, not a revolution. A revolution is when the people overthrow a tyranny. There was no tyranny here. This was a rebellion by the obscenely wealthy people of Eden, by the corrupt aristocrats, by the generals. They didn't want a democracy. They wanted things to stay just the same. Revolution changes things. They wanted to keep all the power in the... Pietro! What? We have to get ready. Well, don't rush me. I'm telling her about the martyr you of Eden. You'll have plenty of time to talk in the morning. Morning? You're... Oh, oh, please, you're not going to keep me here overnight, better are better get you? Red, her ready, too. Ready for what? We're leaving in the morning on the early flight. We are taking you to Eden.